OK, so let me tell you just for fun as an example. This pocket cube, which is 2 by 2 by 2 Rubik's cube. Uh, what we have in mind is it's called the configuration graph, or sometimes configuration space. But it's a graph, so I'll call it a graph. Uh, this graph has a vertex for each possible state of the cube. So this is a state. Oh, a little creaky here. This is a state. This is a state. This is a state. Now, now I'm hopelessly lost. Okay. Anyone want to work on this board? No one? All right. I'll leave it unsolved then. Uh, OK, so all those are vertices. There's actually a lot of vertices. There are 264 million vertices or so. Uh, if you want, as an aside here, number of vertices is something like 8 factorial times 3 to the 8. Um, and one way to see that, you draw a 2 by 2 by 2 Rubik's cube. So these are uh, these guys are yeah these are what you might call cubelets or cubies I think is a standard term in Rubik's cube land and so the uh, how, there's eight of them in a two by two by two two cubed um, you can essentially permute those cubies within the cube however you like that's eight factorial. And then each of them has three possible twists. It could be like this, it could be like this, or it could be like this. OK, so you've got three for each. And this is actually an accurate count. You're not overcounting the number of configurations. All of those are at least, in principle, conceivable. If you take apart the cube, you can reassemble it in each of those states. And that number is about uh, 264 million, Okay, which is not so bad for computers. You could search that. Um, life is a little bit easier. You get to divide by 24 because there's 24 symmetries of the cube, 8 times 3. You can divide by 3 also because uh, only a third of the configuration space is actually reachable. If you're not allowed to take the parts apart, you have to get there by a motion. You can only get to one third of the 2, two by 2 by 2. So it's a little bit smaller than that if you're actually doing a breadth first search, which is what you're going to be doing on your problem set. But in any case, it's feasible. Uh, OK, that is vertices. I should talk about edges. Uh, for every move, every move takes you from one configuration to another. You could traverse it in one direction, make that move. You could also undo that move, because every move is undoable in a Rubik's cube, this graph is undirected. Or you can think of it as every edge works in both directions. So, so this is a move. It's called a quarter twist. Uh, some, this is a controversy, if you will. Uh, some people allow a whole half twist as a single move. Whether you define that as a single move or a double move, not that big a deal. Just changes some of the answers. But uh, you're still exploring essentially the same graph. So that's the graph, and you'd like to know some properties about it. So let me draw a picture of the graph. I'm not going to draw all 264 million vertices. But in particular, there is the solved state. We kind of care about that one, where all the colors are aligned. Uh, then there's all of the configurations you could reach by one move. So these are the possible moves from solved state. And then from those configurations, there's more places you can go. Maybe there's multiple ways to get to the same node. Okay, but these would be all of the configurations you can reach in two moves. Okay, and so on. And at some point, you run out of graph. So there might be some ways to get, there might be a few things, a few nodes out here. These are kind of the, the way I'm drawing this, 
This is everything you can reach in one move, and two moves, and three moves. At the end, this would be 11 moves, uh, if, you, if you allow half twists. Uh, and I guess as puzzlers, we're particularly interested in this number, which you would call, as a graph theorist, the diameter of the graph. Puzzlers call it God's number, if you were God or some um, uh, omni-something <laughs> being. You have the optimal algorithm for solving the Rubik's Cube. How many moves do, do you need if you always follow the best path? And the answer is, in the worst case, 11. So we're interested in the worst case of the best algorithm. For 2 by 2 by 2, the answer is 11. For 3 by 3 by 3, uh, the answer is 20. That was just proved last summer with I don't, a couple years of computer time. For 4x4x4, four by four by four, I don't have one here. I think we'll never know the answer. For 5x5x5, five five five, we'll never know the answer. For 6, for 7, same deal. Uh, but for 2x2x2, two by two by two, you can compute it. You will compute it on your problem set. And uh, it's kind of nice to know because it says, whatever configuration I'm in, I can solve it in 11 moves. But the best known way to, to compute it is basically to construct this graph uh, one layer at a time until you're done, and then you know what the diameter is. The trouble is, in between here, this grows exponentially. At some point, it, it decreases a little bit. But getting over that exponential hump is really hard.